Alright, welcome to the first video of the four part series. If you haven't seen the introduction to these tools, go ahead and watch the previous video linked down in the description. But today we're going to be setting up Yomichan and TTU. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the browser. Alright, so I'm going to be doing fresh installs. I just hopped onto my virtual computer that I created for this video. And we're going to go ahead and install Yomichan and get TTU running. So you're going to want to go into your browser. Inside of the browser, you're going to want to search up Yomichan extension um, either that or you can go down to the description below and i'll have all the links to these pages you want to go into the google chrome store and then you want to add it to chrome so go ahead add extension and then it's going to take you over to this page here so now this is your yomi chan page and you're going to want to go into this settings page we'll go customize that now so go ahead to the top right corner of the google chrome go ahead and click on it so what i did there was i just clicked on yomi chan and then go ahead and click this settings cog here. So now you'll see all of the settings that you're going to set up and I'll guide you through that. Alrighty, so the next thing you want to do is we want to get some dictionaries for Yomi-chan. So the easiest way to do that is just to go to the Yomi-chan page um, by Fusoft Productions and here they have some dictionaries that we're going to go ahead and download. So at the table of contents, we're going to go down to dictionaries and then for Japanese, what we're going to do is a JM Dict English. All right, it's going to download. Uh, once it's downloaded, go ahead and right click it, show in folder. If you miss that, then it's probably going to just be inside of your downloads folder. And once you're here, we don't need to do anything with this JM Dict English. We're just going to go ahead and leave it as is. If you only want Japanese to English, this is where you can stop. But I'm going to show you how to get a Japanese, a Japanese dictionary as well. So the ones that I use are actually from something called the Moe. It's a uh, another resource online where you can read through what their methodology is and um, see how they go about learning Japanese. I've found a lot of their setups to be really nice and I use some of their uh, tools as well. So the monolingual dictionary that we're going to be grabbing is going to be this first one here. Um, Obunsha Kokugo Jiten 11th edition. If you scroll up a little bit, you'll see uh, Shoyomi chan dictionaries collection. Go ahead, click into that. And then we're going to go into the monolingual one here and then just go ahead and click this um, so we can see it as a list layout. And then we're going to go ahead and find the dictionary. So we're going to do this one um, with the Nashi because we don't want any of the uh, pictures. <laughs> so just go ahead and download this right click into it. Make sure it's inside of your downloads folder or wherever and you should be good to go. All right, so we're going to close out of those and we're going to go back to that Yomi-chan setup page. So now what we want to do is um, we're going to go ahead and click configure installed and enabled dictionary. So go ahead, click into it, then click import, go over to your downloads folder and then install the JM dict. It doesn't really matter what order you install them in. I'm just going to do the JM dict one first. If you're concerned about where this dictionary came from, this one is from the website gshol.org. They use the same database, I believe, um, for this dictionary. So it's, it's generally pretty accurate. And it may take a little bit of time. Mine just finished importing. And then you're going to go ahead and import the second one. All right. And then once those are done uh, and being imported, go ahead and put the um, I'm assuming you're just starting out, so you'll mostly be using Japanese to English first. Go ahead, set that as the number one priority for the dictionary uh, decks. If you did have more dictionaries, what you could do is do two, then one. Basically, all this does is it just orders them in the list of what you're going to see first. So uh, let's just go ahead and put that back to zero to one. Go ahead and close. So the next thing you want to do is go ahead, head over to this bottom left corner and click advanced. And that's going to give us access to all of the features that we're going to be customizing today. And so the next thing that you want to do is go ahead, unclick this uh, show welcome show welcome guide. You don't want it to be opening every time you open up the browser. And so, yeah, just turn this off. It gets annoying. Um, next thing you want to scroll down to is the scan modifier key. So I actually have it set to no key. So Anytime that I come across a Japanese word, I don't even have to click shift uh, for me to look it over. Uh, but I recommend you leave it at I recommend you leave it at shift. It allows you to um, look up when you need to. So I recommend you just keep it as shift. I turn on scan using middle mouse button. Sometimes I don't want to click shift. This allows you to just click the middle mouse 
uh, button, the scroll button on your mouse to, to scan and look things up. Now, if you do want to go with no key like myself, you, what you want to do is set this to 500. This will make sure uh, so that you can scroll around on whatever you're reading without 5 billion pop-ups occurring. So this will put a delay in the pop-up time. So I found about half a second is good. But if you're going to be using shift, you don't want too much delay. So just go ahead and just leave it at 20 if you're doing shift. Um, what I like to do is, uh, especially if you have no key, turn off search text with non-Japanese characters. This makes it so when you're looking at just regular English romaji or just English text, you're not searching things up if you have no key on. So this is absolutely needed. You absolutely need to, need to turn this off if you have no key set. But if you have shift, it's okay. Um, I recommend you just turn it off because most of the time you're not going to be using Romaji or looking up Romaji. And then go ahead and do the deep content scanning. And then as we scroll down a little bit more, what's uh, you're going to want to go ahead and uh, turn on the allow scanning pop-up content. Um, turn this to 9999 to allow the maximum number of pop-ups. So this basically allows you to scan the text and allows you to scan the deck, uh, scan whatever Japanese is inside of that dictionary definition. Um, so that comes out to be very helpful. And then I realize this isn't popped up over here. So just go ahead and refresh the page. And now you'll see that this is uh, showing you the pop up. So yeah, this is how the pop is going to look um, when you're when you're looking things up. So we'll just continue scrolling down back to where we were. And these it doesn't really matter what you these are just some appearance question uh, appearance things doesn't really matter too much um, depends on your preference so let's continue scrolling down um, what I would adjust however is the scale of the pop-up size um, I have it at 150 so it's a little bit larger so now you can see it a little bit better and then you can leave the size of the pop-up um, so if we change it to like 700 for example uh, it'll make it wider, but I think it's because this isn't wider that it's not becoming wider. So I would just leave it at the standard. Um, this stuff doesn't really matter too much. And then, okay, so we're at audio. This is, um, some people recommend that you leave autoplay search result auto or you turn on this one. So for example, if you, if you have it on, mm. it's going to automatically read the word as you could just heard right there. Um, if not, uh, I just leave it off and if I want to hear what the word sounds like I just click this volume button Yummy. and it's gonna it's gonna show it so um, yeah you can adjust how loud the volume is I, I actually have mine set at 40 because sometimes it's really really loud and you don't want it blowing your eardrums out while you're trying to read things so I just make that a little bit lower um, all right so continue scrolling down I don't think any of these any of these are uh, important. And then the last thing you have to set up here is the Anki integration. So the Anki integration, we're going to be going over a little bit more on the third video, but uh, go ahead and, you know, turn this on. And that's all we're going to be needing for the time being. Um, the next things we'll be doing for the Anki, we'll set up in that other video. All right. And then the next thing you want to do is do enable search page clipboard text monitoring. Um, it will monitor your clipboard if you're concerned about security things. Uh, so just letting you know that there and that it will be allow. So and that's going to be it for the setup. Um, so back to what I was talking about for the enable search page clipboard text monitoring. There's actually a shortcut if you click alt insert this Yomi Chan search page is going to pop up. And so this, you know, if you don't have a clipboard monitor or anything like that will allow you to, let's just say, let's just go back here. And then we're going to copy. Now it's going to pop up in this Yomi Chan search. Uh, so if we had a longer sentence, let's go ahead and go to Dang, I don't have the Japanese keyboard installed here. And I guess this is also a really good thing as well. So if you want to install the Japanese keyboard, go ahead and go down to the search for Windows. Go ahead to language settings. Uh, what we're going to do is add a language. We're going to search up Japanese. We're going to add the Japanese uh, language. All right, and it's going to take about 
like a minute or so to get this Japanese language installed. And in the bottom right corner here, you can click the ENG to switch between Japanese or English. Um, and if you leave it in Japanese, you can still type in Romaji. So let's go back to the browser. Um, if I want to type in Japanese, uh, go ahead, click the A down here, or you can click Alt and tilde, it'll change. I'm clicking Alt tilde, you can see it's changing. So English, English, you can type in English. And if you do Alt tilde, now you can type in Japanese. So now you know how to get the Japanese keyboard installed. Let's go back to the main topic of the video. All right, so let's just go ahead and look up some news. All right, so now I'm just on some news article page. So if I go ahead and just copy a entire sentence, if I go over to the Yomi Chan, um, if I go over to the Yomi Chan search page, now I can see the all the sentences here. I can click what I want to um, translate, and you can see it changing down below. So that's just a quick way on how you can use the Yomi Chan search and it's a very helpful feature but i don't really use it nowadays because i've got something that is better in my opinion and so what that is is it is it's a text hooker so uh, we're gonna go ahead and install that now so anna crayon djt text hooker. i totally butchered that um but we're gonna go ahead and get this text hooker page i just download the offline file so i can use it offline and it's going to download and be put inside of your uh, file browser Wherever you have it, um, you want to make sure you just remember where the location is. Uh, what you can do is double click it. It's going to open itself in Chrome and then you can bookmark it. So you can bookmark this tab. And then now anytime that you want to use it, you can find it in the bookmarks. I'm going to go ahead and just click show bookmarks bar. And now I can just go straight to it. So. Now you can see that it's linked to wherever the page is and this is your text hooker. So the next thing we want to do is download a download a browser extension that allows the text hooker to actually grab the text. So uh, what you're going to need is a browser that is called clipboard inserter. So clipboard inserter. Okay. Yeah. So now go ahead and click add to Chrome. Go ahead, click add extension. And then now you have the clipboard inserter installed. So now what you want to do is go back over to that text hooker page. You can go over to these extensions here and then you can go ahead and click on the clipboard inserter. And then now uh, you can see that it's on. So it's going to uh, monitor what I highlight. So for example, if I highlight here and click copy, Actually, before this can actually work, what you're going to want to do is go into the options of it and you want it to access, be able to access URL file. So go ahead, turn on this, allow access to URL file. Um, you can allow it incognito. Um, you know, I don't really use it in an in incognito. So go ahead and just um, select those options and then exit out of it. And then now it should be able to uh, monitor the text. So make sure that it's turned back on. And yeah, so this is what I had highlighted, um, but this works really nicely for um, this works really nicely for Japanese. So, for example, if I just copy this now, I can see it in here and I can search things up with Yomi Chan. And then actually one more thing with Yomi Chan, you actually have to enable it to read URLs as well. So go ahead and go to the manage extensions. Um, part of Yomi Chan, and then you want to be able to allow access to file URLs, and then you can allow it in incognito if you use incognito. So that should be that, and then you should be able to um, use it in this clipboard monitor here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and refresh it, and then you can be, and then you can search things up with Shift or whatever. So I like this a little bit better. This allows me to see previously what I had copied in. So I'm just Control Cing a bunch of things here, and it's. I'm going to update the page based on what I had looked. Whereas if you go back to the other page, Alt Insert for the Yomi Chan search, it's only going to allow it's only going to allow one at a time. So let's do this. So you can't see the history. So that's why I like to use the clipboard monitor, and that is going to be that. All right, and the last thing we need for this video, the Yomi Chan TTU, is you need TTU. So TTU is going to be a um, is going to be an online EPUB reader. Uh, so TTSU reader. Um, here we are. 
what I would do, what I recommend is you go ahead and bookmark this page. So go ahead, bookmark this, and I just call it TTU. Um, this allows you to upload EPUBs uh, of Japanese books onto here and allows you to read it. So how you can get the EPUBs, I won't go over, but you can find a lot of stuff on Reddit. So I recommend you uh, go just check that out. But I have a file that I'm going to upload anyways. So I'm going to go ahead and just click it. I'm going to go over to my desktop and I have an EPUB all ready to look up. So it's going to upload the EPUB and here I am. Let's go over to the, so if you click the top here, go over to the settings cog, go to continuous. Uh, this is what I like to have it set at. Um, you can change the font size. Um, I like to leave it at continuous. The writing mode, I like to leave at vertical. Auto bookmark I, bookmark, I turn on. And then hide Furigana off, hide Furigana partial, style partial, auto position on resize. So those are all the settings you need. And then of course you can change the color. I like to leave it at this tan one, but I've used the dark mode ones in the past before. So now that you have your settings, you can go through the text and, and read it. Um, so like for example, the first part, you know, we can, now we can search things up as we go and this just makes it really nice to be able to read and then later on you'll be able to actually sentence mine from it with Anki. All right and so that's going to be the end of today's tutorial Yomi-chan and TTU so if you run into any issues please go ahead join the discord group chat that's in the description and ask it in the tech channels channel um, and I'll be able to help you there. But the next video following is going to be MPV and MPVacious setup where I presume more troubles are going to arise. So look forward to that and I will see y'all in the next video.